I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. Last night was a violent one in the city of Newburgh with a pair of shootings that may not have been related. According to Police Chief Michael Ferrara, uh, the shooting incidents uh, occurred beginning at around 11 last night. Uh, 11 o'clock last night we had a shooting at William Street and Bencard Avenue. Uh, a 16-year-old male was shot in the back Okay, during an incident where it's being investigated. Uh, throughout the night and into the morning. Uh, about an hour later, 12.20 a.m., we had another shooting at 199 Chamber Street. A 20-year-old uh, male was shot in the buttocks at 199 Chamber Street, and we're investigating that case also. It doesn't appear that these shootings are related, but uh, we, we don't know. We don't, we know. We don't know. We have, we're investigating, trying to figure out who the players are, what they were up to, and what, what was going on, but it's two separate crime scenes at di different ends of the city. Both of the shooting victims were listed in stable condition at St. Luke's Cornwall Hospital. Ferrara was uh, hoping his officers would be able to get some information from eyewitnesses that will result in arrests. Well, prior to last night, there had been 25 shootings in Newburgh uh, so far this year alone. And against that backdrop of escalating of violence, Political and law enforcement officials gathered in downtown Newburgh today to announce another gun buyback amnesty initiative. Those who turn in firearms can do so without fear of criminal charges and will receive gift cards from ShopRite and Price Chopper in amounts up to $150. Orange County Sheriff Carl Dubois says, as in the past, the goal is to remove a gun that might uh, someday have been used uh, in a future shooting tragedy. In some cases, uh, you know, uh, Guns are, uh, you know, passed down through the generations, or down through down through families, and they really don't know the origins of those guns. Uh, you know, some of them could end up being stolen, but um, you know, some of them also could be uh, illegally possessed. And um, you know, this is an opportunity, uh, you know, uh, with uh, with an amnesty uh, to uh, you know to turn those guns in. And I again, you know, take the uh, threat off the street, whether it be they use in a commission of a crime or uh, they fall into hands, um, you know, where there could be an accident, you know, uh, or a child uh, could grab a gun, uh, maybe. You know, tucked away in somebody's you know drawer or something like that, and um, you know ended up you know seriously uh, injuring or killing somebody. The gun buyback program in Newburgh begins this Saturday, June 14th, from 10 to 1 at the House of Refuge on Broadway in Newburgh, and will continue through June 30th. Last year, the city of Newburgh took in 143 weapons during a countywide gun buyback program, the most of any municipality. Christopher Palumbo has a June 19th date in Town of to Court, where he will answer charges connected to the theft of money while employed at an area car dealership. The charges stem from Palumbo's activities while he was a parts and service representative at a Nissan Kia of Middletown. Investigators say Palumbo took cash payments from customers for service repairs uh, for their vehicles and uh, would steal the money. Police say he uh, would then release the vehicles back to customers without any repairs having been completed. A 37-year-old resident of Bayonne, New Jersey, is facing charges of grand larceny and falsifying business records. The driver of a tractor trailer who uh, crashed his rig into a car near the Be Newburgh Beacon Bridge last August has been sentenced to five years in prison for his guilty pleas to charges of second-degree assault and driving while intoxicated. 50-year-old James Tedenkin of uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, was driving under the influence of alcohol and oxycodone when he hit a car driven by 39-year-old New Jersey resident Alyssa Betterbid. She underwent 10 surgeries and needed months of rehabilitation. Tedenkin was additionally sentenced to three years of post-release supervision. State police search of his tractor-trailer after the crash turned up two coolers filled with empty beer cans. It happened back on December 2nd of last year. Two workers were killed when a retaining wall collapsed at a construction site off Homestead Avenue in Maybrook. Now investigators uh, with the Federal Occupational Safety and Health Administration have cited the property owner, Hallmar International, with a pair of serious workplace safety violations. The on-scene crew had been pouring concrete for a mock-up of an aqueduct project the company was uh, working on. The accident claimed the lives of 53-year-old Timothy Lang of Saugerties and 50-year-old uh, Scott Winkler of Monroe. OSHA determined the formwork uh, for the retaining wall was not adequately braced and failed to support the loads applied to it 
during the concrete pour. Hallmar has uh, until June 20th to decide whether to accept the violations. OSHA has proposed a fine of $7,000. State police say two Middletown men have been charged with grand larceny and forgery for making thousands of dollars worth of illegal purchases with a stolen credit card. Police say their investigation revealed that the victim's credit card had been removed from his vehicle while it was at a local repair shop. The card uh, was then used by 35-year-old Antonio Cassano and 31-year-old Michael Matuszewski, who uh, then put the card back into the vehicle uh, before the victim returned to pick up his car. Police say the stolen car had been used to make uh, more than $3,000 in purchases at the town of Wallkill Home Depot over several days. And if your travels normally take you across the Route 32 Lake Street Bridge over Quasayak Creek in Newburgh, you'll have to find another route. As of Saturday, the bridge was closed indefinitely after Newburgh City DPW Chief George Garrison was driving over it and noticed a severe dip in the roadway. An inspection determined structural concerns reportedly connected to the city's sewer line that runs through the lower part of that bridge structure. Engineers say a leak over time caused erosion in the metal arch holding up the bridge, which apparently caused the drop in the road. Clouds and showers are the two prominent words in our local forecast. Tomorrow will be another cloudy, dreary day. With showers likely, the highs will be up around 80 degrees. Wednesday's weather will feature a mix of sun and clouds, with temperatures topping out in the upper 70s. You will get your day off to a good start when you start it by reading the Times-Herald Record. And breaking news is just a click away right here at Record Online. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter. Thank <laughs> you.